Hi, welcome back to Inside the History here at Battleship Cove. I'm Tom Lowney, GM1, Gunner's Mate, retired. And we're here today to give you an insight into a little bit of nautical history and terminology. So that way you have a better understanding. Uh, back in the olden days, a sail when it first came out, many sailors were illiterate. Uh, they didn't read, write. So how did they figure out what was what and remember things without writing it down? Well, certain things look a certain way. They look like animals. So sailors started naming pieces of material after animals. So the forecastle, or forecastle on a ship, and it was called a forecastle because early sailing ships, their, cat, their forward and aft structures were castle-like structures, like forts. So it was called the forecastle. And on that, you had different materials that you needed to anchor the ship, sail the ship, winches, and so forth. So these things had to be given names so sailors could identify with them. Since they didn't read or write, they were look like animals. So we're going to go up on the forecastle today and look at the zoo of a ship on the forecastle. So let's take a walk around and we'll look at it. So as we cross off the teak deck onto the forecastle here, you can start looking around and seeing the different animals. Looks like steel and machinery to you, but it's quite different. So as we walk up, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the pelican hook. The pelican hook is basically the stopper for the anchor. This holds the anchor in place so tension can be taken off. The wildcat. Now, the wildcat, again, named after another animal, is what brings up the anchor under hydraulic and electrical power. Well, they didn't have that back in the sailing days. You had rods that were put in and the crew used to bring it out and to let it go you would release a brake because they did have brakes back then in the sailing days and this would scream out and run like a wildcat wildcat then you have the anchor chain goes down to the anchor locker down here to the horse pipe the horses because the horses come running out so they call it the horse pipe. And the covers, if I remember correctly from my long ago seaman days, were called jackass covers. Because the mules were usually the ones that did the hard work keeping the, the water out from going in the ship during rains and heavy seas. So the capsons we used to bring up line. So as we go through, you start seeing all the references because sailors didn't read or write way back when. You, you pull kids fresh out of seaports who are just, you got what you got, so you had to teach them. So if we start walking up here, you're going to look up at the very bow of the ship. Now, most ships, again, more pelican hooks, all right? We're going to go to what most people are familiar with on ships is the bullnose. Now on this ship we have two bullnoses. Most of them have a single chalk that you'd run through. You pull your towing houses and so forth to hook up or tow a ship or anchor it or tie it up to another ship or pier. But on here we have two. We don't have a singular bullnose, we have two. So that's where you would bring your lines up for either anchoring or mooring out to another ship or being towed. So your towing hawser would run up here to the white pad eyes to the deck. Now this is a, a bridle because you marry up stuff, the actual towing hawser, and it'd be multiple, not just one. So it was a, a bridle. And as you come back further aft, you have what's called the elephant's toe because it, the toe, the big toe, stuck out. Elephant, because it's huge. The circumference of an elephant's foot. Now this is used to, for multiple purposes. 
for you the mooring line, towing line, not per se a fixed designed one. It was used in reference to in lieu of like bits. These are called bits. Okay, this is what the mooring lines are tied up to, and they use chocks. Now these chocks have rollers here, so that way you could use them in conjunction with the capstans. But this is a closed roller chop. And you could use this if you needed to real quick with a tugboat to help pull out. Or you could use it to lash and hold the anchor in. Or have a line running out to the flukes of the anchor and tie it off in case you had to take the anchor chain apart and work on the swivel or the pivot point of the anchor. So there are multiple uses for this, but it was just referenced as the elephant stuff. So, there's a few different animals here that you've got a hint of, and there's more to see. So, let's take a look at the anchor. Now, this anchor would not normally be here. This anchor was put up here as a display to show you because one of the anchors on here was taken out, and this is the one, and the anchor... Uh, chain was pet out for mooring so that way we didn't have anything out here to tie off to for the bow so they put out basically a anchor chain and a mooring cell underwater a weight to hold off and the anchor was put up here on deck it's 25 thousand pounds of steel and now we're going to look at the bits and what we call the rat tail that would be here. Now, on board this ship, you don't see it, but normally there's a pad eye over here on newer ships. This ship, they would probably use uh, an offset on this. As you bring the mooring line in, we have anchor chain here because it's a permanent mooring. We use the ship's anchor chain for that. But when you use the capstan to bring up lines, to tighten them up, pull the ship in, once it's taut on the capstan, how do you get the line off and put it on the bits and figure eight it to make a bird's nest? And I'll explain that in a minute. But when you bring it up under tension, now you got it tensed up. How do you take the line without losing the tension and figure eight it? Well, you do a, a round turn, then start figure eighting it, which is called taking the line and running it like a figure eight so that it would be able to take the tension. Turtle heads, you'd have cat's paws, you'd have all items on board ship that we can go into in depth but we want, but there's more animals. Are you curious? Go online, Google them, and look for animals of the, of, uh, the forecastle or, or forecastle. And you'll be able to see all the different names and look them up individually, and you can learn about each part of the ship because a lot of them dealt with sailing ships, and those terms crossed over to steel navy, but a lot of them didn't. But we have a lot on board here. So these are your animals of the folks. Some of them. Thank you for your time. Hope this gave you a little bit more info into nautical history. And we'll see you out there. If you like what you saw and you want to learn more, help out. Like, share, subscribe. And remember, always look for volunteers. You former boatswain mates and if you want to come down here and pretty up the forecastle we're looking for help as well so or any other part of the ship so give us a call go online check us out hope to see you out there again my name is tom Lowney, gm1 retired down here saturdays hope to see you take care thank you